Good morning, everybody. This is Ross Foreman with Impact Wrestling. I'd like to welcome you to this week's media teleconference. Today's special guest is none other than the Impact Grand Champion, EC3. Welcome to the teleconference. Hello, everybody. That's well, how's it, uh, how's it going for you, EC3? Oh, it's going great. That's the kind of running joke we have online popping right now is uh, the big hello situation that just took place. But I am well. I just got back from Cancun, Mexico with AAA. Had a good time over there, and um, I guess we're going to talk some junk, so let's do it. What, uh, g- give us an update on uh, Mexico. How did that go for you? Well, it's a country that just got shattered by an earthquake, so that's very unfortunate, uh, I guess. But for myself, I spent uh, three days in lovely Riviera at the Hard Rock Resort. Uh, I had one wrestling match, and I had about two benders. Uh, and I had about 17 to 20 steaks. Um, p- pretty good trip. Got a nice little tan going. Uh, met some interesting people, uh, mostly senoritas, and uh, it was it was great. All righty. Uh, your thoughts uh, heading into Bound for Glory? Well, I mean, we have a long road. Where we have about five weeks till BMG up in Canada. Looking very forward to uh, wrestling there. Looking very forward to having a one of our biggest shows of the year take place, uh, especially not in Orlando. It's kind of exciting for me to get out in front of a new audience and uh, I'm expecting big things from the show and uh, I guarantee to deliver because I'm the best guy here, I'm the best guy there, and I'm you know pretty much the best guy anywhere. All righty. Well, we will open up for questions. Uh, we ask, as always, when you call in and uh, hit star six to request a, uh, a question, Please identify yourself, your media outlet, and one question alone so we can get through the list of uh, questions we have. Unless there's a clever follow-up question, then I will accept it. Hello? Again? Over there? You may now ask your question. Am I speaking? Well, hello, EC3. Ah. This is James from Interactive Wrestling Radio, Wrestling Epicenter. James, my dear friend, I am just extraordinary. How are you? I guess my question is going to be, how did you enjoy the idea of heading north of the border for Bound for Glory and leaving the Impact Zone and your guys' comfort zone? Yeah, I mean, we're going to head up to America's Top Hat, a.k.a. Canada which has always been a haven for some of the best wrestling fans in the world. I think uh, stepping out of our comfort zone is an absolute necessity, uh, not only for a company, but for myself as well. I'm very much looking forward to, you know, what we can, the business we can accomplish in Canada, trying new things, getting out there, getting in the mix. A lot of times we do television and it's, you know, sincerely or basically based in Orlando with a lot of the same uh, fans in attendance. So it's hard to see, get a gauge on what is working as far as our television product is going until we get into front of people that might be watching the product but not attending the shows live. So we can see what works, what doesn't work, who's where, and, uh, you know, that's the ultimate litmus test, and that's what we strive to do. Muted. Hello, Ethan. Ryan Ryder from Main Event Radio. How's it going? Ryan Ryder, double R, rock and roll, man. Yeah, right. I'm getting you. Yeah, not bad. All right, so coming to Ottawa for Bound for Glory, I know you're an avid traveler. Which tourist attraction are you most excited to check out? In Ottawa? That's a great yeah. question. Considering the fact I haven't done my research on Ottawa, um, maybe I can – meet up with some oil tycoons and light some cigars on, you know, fire with some $100 bills or 100 loony bills. I don't know if they have those in Canada. Um, I'm not completely familiar with what Ottawa has to offer as far as touristy, but when we go up there for television, it's not going to be touristy. It's going to be business. And, you know, my business is going to be what takes place in the ring, what's taking place backstage. I mean, our time is very limited uh, due to filming television where I'll have to be, you know, Pulling it in the gym, maybe two a days, working the television broadcast, trying to get some rest, but probably falling into the traps of the road and having a couple cocktails. I heard the Canadian beer is like moonshine up there. I'm willing to find that out. And then rinse and repeat for five to six days. So uh, there might not be time for tourist activities, but it's definitely time for business. Well, we do have great beer, but we don't take paper money. We have uh, loony coins. 
Well, I don't know how I can light a cigar with a coin, but I'll find a way. <laughs> Maybe a ten dollar bill. Maybe. Thanks, Ethan. Yeah. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful dot com. Uh, Hi, Sean. Seen a lot. Of... Hi. Hi, hello. Let's have some bad. How's, how's your wife and my kid? Ha <laughs> ha You didn't come <laughs> to my wedding. I almost... There have been a lot of new faces in Impact recently. What has that been like backstage? Because I mean, now at like what three years in, you're kind of the veteran backstage. Yeah, I'm pretty much the man. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's it's been interesting to see. I mean, the whole changeover from ownership to you know creative and stuff like that. I've kind of before this change solidified myself as a you know I don't want to pat my own back, but I will because who else will? Like kind of a locker room leader in a sense, and uh, I kind of took a step back just to see you know where the chips would fall, see everything lined up, and you know there's been some changes again, but at the same time I had talked to you know our new ownership and kind of got on the page with them where I'm ready to assume that role. And what I see out of the new talent is, you know, I see a lot of optimism. I see a lot of heart, but I also see some things that are not perhaps the most professional way to approach them. And, you know, it's time for me to kind of step up and take that on. But at the same time, you know, like I was once a naive, hungry, hungry eyed uh, talent. So I understand these wares, um, I love seeing new people try new things. I love seeing what's going to work, what's not going to work, who's going to be something and who's going to fall by the wayside. And uh, I can only work with those that are, you know, worth working. And anybody who wants an opportunity, I am willing to work with them and, you know, create great television, create new moments, new memories, give them an opportunity, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for me to grow and to learn by working with somebody new. So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is I want to challenge Richard Justice to a street fight. Will it happen? I don't know, but no, I'm very much looking forward to working with new people and uh, it's exciting. Awesome. Thanks. Hey, buddy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Brayden Harrington here from the Fight Network up in Toronto. We are very excited for uh, you guys to come up to the Great White North. But EC3, I have a question for you. Um, Hit me. I was a I was a huge fan of your E Sing Three character that you kind of brought over to the India uh, tapings, and yes. uh, I always I always laugh at your promos. So my question is, how do you prepare yourself for such great promos? And any advice you would give to a young wrestler working on the microphone. Yeah, um, I mean, for myself, promos, I mean, it's just another facet to the game, and it's something I've been fortunate enough to be uh, fairly decent at. Uh, when I prepare myself for a promo, I just want to, you know, the first order of business is what is the business of this segment? What are we trying to accomplish? Now, the second time, I like to approach it in a way that uh, – is believable, but at the same time entertaining, also not at the expense of what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, I, I try to be creative. I try to think outside the box. I try to just be a little bit different. I see promos on television all the time. It's very standard and straightforward to me, so I like when you step outside the box a little bit. Fortunately, I have that freedom. Uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And as far as new talent, you know, maybe – looking at that aspect of their game, uh, find comfort in the character you are. I mean, we're not award-winning actors out here. Our, our marketability is an, an extension of our personality. So what makes you unique, what makes you different, uh, find that, apply that, and uh, bring it bring it to the table in a, in a sense that can appeal to uh, mainstream audience. Don't play... Don't play wrestler. Be yourself. I guess would be good advice. Thank you. You can only be the best of you possible. You can't be somebody else. Hi, Ethan. This is Grant Matthews of HitRemote.com. How are you doing today? Great. Are you Josh Matthews' brother? I I get that a lot, but no, that's unfortunately not true. I mean, oh, you're very lucky. But anyway, so I wanted to I wanted to ask you about uh, your currently your creative freedom in Impact Wrestling compared to your time in NXT in seasons four and five of Redemption. 
Uh, can you kind of compare the two? Do you have? Can you get away with more in Impact compared to NXT TV, where you know the, uh, the powers that be weren't paying too much attention? Can you, can you kind of compare those two tenures, please? I think uh, at the point I am now in Impact, you know, I've I've been there a few years. I've solidified myself in a pretty top position, so I have a little bit of leeway. But at the same time, I never exploit that leeway to go into business for myself or do what is wrong. If I mess up, if I blow it. You know, I'm the first one to know, and I fully expect to be uh, reprimanded the second I get back. But fortunately, that doesn't happen too much because I try to, you know, as I said earlier, approach what the business of what we're trying to accomplish is. Uh, NXT season four and five, we had, you know, a shocking amount of creativity and uh, creative freedom based solely on the fact that nobody really cared or was watching. It was a lot of, like, it was a great learning experience for what I had now, and it was, you know, it was fun. Uh, the only thing that wasn't fun was, you know, the indifference you kind of felt doing it. Like, it didn't really matter how great it was because, you know, they had bigger fish to fry, and I understand that. So NXT, even in developmental with Dusty Rhodes, was a lot of uh, ability to explore who you, who you were and uh, in my time in WWE, I never really had a chance to do anything that was, you know, super controlled by writing and creative besides selling Mark Henry Cologne, and we saw how that turned out. But uh, NXT was a great experience to learn from. Uh, it's not what it is today, and they seem to have a similar amount of ability to explore themselves, which is good. But at the same time, what I do in Impact, you know, I do what I think is best for the company, and at the same time, it's hopefully entertaining and poignant and uh, slightly different that the fans can enjoy. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I have a question. Who are you? My name is Derek. Nice. Good first name. Last name is Bateman. Oh, I thought he is deceased. I thought he died in a fireworks explosion. No, that's a uh, a fallacy that has been prophesized and talked about by you, but I'm I'm alive and well. Well, it's good to hear from you. Cousin, what's up? My question is, um, I heard that you said something about Josh Matthews earlier, and I was just curious as to what that was. <laughs> oh, I said, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Matthews asked me a question, and, uh, you know, I was like, hey, are you Josh Matthews' brother? And he said... Absolutely not. And I said, well, aren't you very fortunate? Because the last I checked, Josh Matthews is going off on fantasy football owners online and uh, has completely lost his cool. So that's all. I didn't yell at any fantasy football owners. <laughs> you canceled all your leagues. You're insane. Oh, you read my article on rotoexperts.com, where everyone on this call can go to rotoexperts.com and read my articles. Yes, I actually read your writing for some reason. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, you know. You know in our private text group. Yeah. I'm good. All right, well, I'll let you get back. Ross came in and, and stooged you off, and, and I had to come in and, and say something. Well, that's fair. Uh, take care, Derek. I hope you don't blow up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you later. Now we'll get to some real important questions. <laughs> Uh, hi, EC3. It's uh, Lee Hazel from Steel Chair Magazine. And uh, up, I just want to ask you... Oh, hey, dude. Um, yeah, we're just wondering, um, how much does the Impact Grand Championship mean to you? Uh, that's a good question, and I'm going to answer it honestly. Um, I think it could mean more. I think uh, it could mean a lot. I feel the concept of it is sort of... Uh, up in the air, and it's not, not really committed to. I enjoy kind of the, the aspect of the matches, but at the same time, I think the title, first off, I think it looks awesome. Secondly, people seem to like it when I'm, they don't understand wrestling and I walk around with it. They're like, hey, you're a champion. You're cool. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. Uh, but I really think it could mean, we can make it mean more. And I don't know if that's completely abandoning, abandoning the three-round concept or if it's uh, putting a, a focus on it in a different sense, you know, uh, there, we are limited. We have a two-hour show. There's only so much you can do. With a two-hour show, there's only so many stories you can tell once. But I think uh, 
the title could have a lot more value, and uh, I would definitely be the guy to do that and bring value as long as, uh, you know, we make it a focal point. If we don't, then it's just, it kind of feels like a prop to me. And, you know, that's not on me. That's just on how we want to present it. And I would love to make it mean something and make it mean more than a world title or a global championship, to be honest. And I can do that. It's just about making it happen. That's great. Thank you, dude. Yeah, man. Hello, Ethan. This is Nick Hausman from uh, WrestleZone. How are you doing today? Hey, Nick. How are you? I'm good, man. You sound really happy hey. today. You're you're saying some really smart things on this call. I'm, you know, a fairly intelligent guy. I don't know, I know. why I'm a wrestler. I should be, you know, a politician. But <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how I can move your question. Okay. Uh, well, my question is, you know, if it brought up on this call how, you know, you've you've been through a couple transitions now for management uh, with GFW TNA and you've been in NXT, I, I'm just kind of interested from your standpoint, what do you think makes good, makes for good pro wrestling leadership and management? What do you like for management and leadership? And what are things that you think don't necessarily help when management uh, does? I think communication is a big thing in management. And I think I said earlier in the call, like I've been able to communicate with management now and you know, I feel a lot more, excited about the future. Uh, That's like a very big thing. And, you know, what's hard about communication, though, is not every talent approaches that communication in the best way because people will hear something and then they, you know, leak it or stooge it off or report it. And that some things need to be kept in house. And um, I understand why communication could be lax sometimes in that retrospect. Uh, a clear vision is great. Like, what are we how are we different? What are we supposed to be? I mean, I have ideas. We all have ideas of what we want to be and should be, but uh, that vision needs to be kind of constructed for us to all see and go on the same page. Uh, to accountability, and I'm not saying accountability where it's on the management to be accountable to talent. I think it's accountability as far as the management to ask for the talent, and that is a uh, the direction they want the business going that is taking place on TV. And uh, if it doesn't, if it falls short or if it's, you know, becomes selfish and the talent isn't accomplishing that, they are accountable to management and, you know, this situation is rectified because you can't have too many cooks in the kitchen per se. Uh, you need kind of, you need a place where the buck will stop. And I think one thing Impact has is there's always been a lot of people that have, you know, say in a sense, but it's never a clear one-off, this is who we answer to, their decision is final, do it or pay the price because you are an employee of them. So I guess an authority figure that, uh, you know, that's how it is. I mean, that's something WWE will always have because, you know, they have a boss. They have Mr. McMahon and, uh, he says his decision is final, and then, you know you respect that, and you do it, or you're out of a job. Hi there, EC3. This is uh, Joe Ronska from Across the Pond Wrestling. Across the Pond, uh, mate. Hello. Yep. Uh, so sorry to once again bring up um, NXT, but I remember back then you did a segment where it was you and Daniel Bryan going on a double date with the Bellows. I remember watching that, thinking that, um, I don't know how to say this, the way you said this the wrong way, but it surprised me that actually for a wrestler you have really good comedic timing. And I've noticed that throughout your entire uh, run like, with promos and sometimes with matches, you're not afraid to have comedic moments, even though it's not necessarily comedy wrestling itself. And I was just wondering if you talk about whether you can, whether you think there's an impetus for top guys and for champions to kind of be serious and whether there's a place for comedy wrestling at the top of companies? Yeah, that's a great question. And let me try to 
approach my mindset to it. Uh, the Bella Twins double date with Daniel Bryan, I mean, that was four talents who come up with a bunch of ideas and uh, you know, a writer, and we all sat together and we thought of it and, like, we just executed it, and it kind of lives in sort of a weird, small infamy, and I'm very happy with it and proud of it because it was a lot of fun to do. And uh, my approach to that at the time was, you know, NXT had a bunch of guys who were, you know, kind of serious always and you know I just want to be different and what the problem with that became that I was pegged as a comedy guy which was not my intention nor ever my want or need uh we're in the entertainment business so I want to be entertaining that was my approach it didn't quite pan off because I became oh this guy's funny but and I get that too because I didn't approach things serious enough while I was trying to be different. Um, now that I'm kind of in a top guy position with impact, what brought me to that is I didn't go away from things I was good at, but at the same time, you know, I put, like, if I'm going to get in a one-on-one world title match with the greatest wrestler of all time, Kurt Angle, I'm going to approach that as serious as I possibly can. But at the same time, I'm going to bring a guy like Kurt Angle and I'm inspired guys like The Rock or Stone Cold. Triple H, guys that could tell a main event, serious angle, and sell tickets, but at the same time can be entertaining while they do that. I mean, you listen to a serious rock promo back in the day, they were very much the business at hand, how he's going to whoop the monkey ass, but at the same time, he's cutting into them deep. There's humor, but it's not, ah, he's funny. They're like, hell yeah, this guy's speaking something I can understand. He's, you know, talking junk to the guy I dislike. And it was entertaining. It was always entertaining. Stone Cold, always entertaining. The guy could destroy Molly Holly with a chair at the time when that was okay. And then at the same time, wear a goofy little sheriff badge and, you know, a cowboy hat and just do another aspect of his game. And so I think this will, they're very well versed. We are entertainment. Main event angles are sold based on serious and true emotions. But at the same time, with the extension of my personality, I'm kind of like, you could tell me the worst news ever. And trust me, I've been in this business long enough to hear all the worst news ever. And I've approached it like, eh, you know, I can maybe parlay my depression or angst with a joke at the same time in an angle on wrestling, my anger and angst towards an opponent. I can cut into them and kind of be entertaining. Or if I'm the antagonist, he is the protagonist. He says some things to me, and I allow them to take place based on, you know, people are supposed to dislike me. So his words hurt me. People like the fact that his words hurt me. Then we have a story to tell, too. So there's a time and a place for comedy. Uh, just not being, like, I don't ever want to be a comedy guy, and I don't want to be a comedy guy. I want to be a top guy, and I am a top guy based on who I am and being an extension of myself, I think, and I hope. Hi, EC3. It's Lee Med from Alive Radio in Scotland. How are you, my friend? I'm good, mate. Cheers to you, brother. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, to answer the question. Obviously, you have been a, a, the face of the company for so long. Obviously, with all the changes that have taken place in calendar year 2017, do you feel a greater pressure now as, as EC3 than you did this time, say, last year when we were still under the old regime? Because obviously the, the focus that is on the, the promotion just now. Uh, not necessarily, and I don't even know if I'm you know, the face of the company. Um, that's a great compliment, if I am. Uh, but I think we have multiple faces. I think we have Bobby Lashley. We have Eli Drake just become the champion. There's, you know, there are options at the top, and that's a very good thing. Uh, do I feel more pressure now? I've kind of almost taken a back seat, in a sense, to other things, and that's okay as long as, you know, the work I'm doing is fulfilling and creative and entertaining to me. So I don't feel – you always feel pressure to do a great job, and I'm sure I'm the hardest person on myself, more so than, you know, anybody could ever be a fan or a boss. No one's harder on me than me. Um and pressure is good in that sense, but I don't feel more or less. I just feel the same pressure to excel at what I do.
AC3, we got a, a question uh, emailed from Ryan Bowen at the Gorilla Position. Want to know your uh, your take on the alliance between Eli Drake and Chris Adonis? Well, I mean, uh, those are two two hunky fellows, aren't they? Uh, I think uh, Eli Drake found himself a good uh, good buddy to run the muck on the top with. There was actually uh, when it was like a month ago we had a six man tag where I joined those two beef castles and we probably combined uh, ultimate body guy team on television at the moment, so that was a, a fun run. Uh, you know, think about Chris and Eli, I don't know how they approach their business, but I know that I sometimes keep my friends close and uh, possible enemies closer. So maybe there's something like that going on. I can't assume Chris would uh, stand by the wayside while Eli took all the glory for too long because uh, he's a very proud and very talented man. So it's an interesting situation that's developing. And, uh, None of my concern because I'm not either of those guys. So, do we just have a quick update on the word or term beef castles? Uh, a quick update on the term beef castle is a hunk of a man. Uh, it doesn't always have to be an extremely muscular and jacked up fella. A beef castle could be, you know. A guy like John Hamm, I mean, what a handsome guy, Beef Castle. You got a guy like Brad Pitt back in the day, Legends of the Fall, long hair, Beef Castle. I'm looking at a picture of Patrick Swayze on my refrigerator, the ultimate Beef Castle, the ultimate man, because not only did he create the ultimate man movie in Roadhouse, he also created the ultimate chick flick in Dirty Dancing. So he's a dual threat. Uh, you know, I guess those are some good Beef, beef Castle examples. Ross, you are not a beef castle. I mean, yes, you are. I don't know. Everyone's a varying level of beef castle they want to be. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Title manager and reporter Andre Corbeil. Opening question for Impact Brand Champion EC3. It's NFL based. As an athlete who makes earnings in the USA performing in front of American fans, and ultimately, since it's the hottest social media topic at the moment, let's hear your take on the down-on-one-knee situation between upset NFL fans and NFL players. Do you agree with I the player stance or the fan stance over the flag and anthem? How would you handle the situation if you were in it? The only thing I agree with is the First Amendment, and that's freedom of speech, and that's the only thing I need to agree with because it's not my place to tell anybody how to express themselves. Um, personally, I would never do anything of that nature. I would never kneel during a national anthem just based on the people I know who have fought and the people I know that have died under the American flag. So it's very personal to me in that sense. But at the same time, I have not lived in anybody else's shoes, and I cannot dictate how they handle uh, their ability to, you know, bring it, you know, cause to their issue or issue to the cause. So it's a slippery slope. Uh, I try not to be political because it's only a lose-lose situation. Uh, freedom of speech is very important, and it's also very uncomfortable for people. So, you know, you have the right to agree. You have the right to disagree. Uh, if the NFL embraces it and the fans want to take their business elsewhere, that's their right too. So um, how would I approach it from a business standpoint? I would stay the hell away, and that's what I'm going to do going forward. Thanks for the question, though. Hi, C3. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge in Scotland. What's up? Yeah, all good. And uh, I'd just like to, first of all, thank you, actually. I, it's not very often as a grown man I mark out at wrestling, but I was at the Impact Zone the night you won uh, the Grand Championship, and that was one of those few times it happened, so thank you for that. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, really anyway. up on that moose. Uh, sure Go ahead. Anyway, my question is uh, to do with um, going to Canada, obviously, for Bound for Glory. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors going around that you might be leaving the impact zone full time. As a resident of Florida, you know, how does that feel? And secondly, if you do go to Canada, do you have a barbershop quartet up in Canada? Do they have those things up there for you? Uh, you know, that's going to have to be a question for the Canadian embassy, which I'm going to probably approach after this call. 
Uh, I signed up for this industry knowing that travel is part of the job, so it does not upset me to, you know, trade in a five-hour flight for an hour-and-a-half drive. Um, I'm very excited to go to Canada. I'm very excited to take the show on the road. Uh, yeah, I mean, Impact Zone was a great home for us, and sometimes out of necessity and other times out of, like, we had some really great moments there. But... Like I said earlier, you can only judge what we're doing on television by taking it outside of where it's filmed and seeing what's working, what's not working, who's where, and who shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? So it's going to be the witness test, so to speak. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, man. We will uh, open it up. If you have a second question, you can get back in the queue. We did have an email question for you, EC3. Your thoughts uh, heading into the baseball playoffs next week, particularly your beloved Indians. They are. I'm very, very proud of the team. I mean, they did uh, – ah, last year was very – it was very difficult, but it was almost cathartic in a way because if you're going to lose, you might as well lose in one of the greatest games uh, I've ever seen played. Uh, obviously, the lane delay is the sole reason we lost. Uh, because if you have all the momentum in the world, if you're in a heavyweight title fight and uh, you're, you're beating, beating the hell out of the other guy and all of a sudden you take 20 minutes off and he has time to regroup and refocus, you know, it's, uh, that's a momentum game, as is all sports. I love the Indians this year. I've been to about seven games throughout the country. They've won every single one of them. I will be in attendance for the division series. So obviously they're going to win that. Um, I mean, they have unfinished business, and trust me, if I know one thing about pride and honor and, you know, self-worth, you know, unfinished business is one of the greatest motivators. So hopefully they take, you know, hopefully they win. That's all I can hope for. At the same time, uh, it's been a magical season and very enjoyable, so I can never say it's a, it would be a disappointment if they did it. EC3, this is Chris Featherstone from WrestleZone.com and the Pancakes and Power Sam Show. How are you today? A dual threat. Yes, and fellow Ohioan, uh, go try. Go try. Yes, absolutely. I've got a question for you as far as the Grand Championship is concerned. Uh, what are your overall thoughts of the title compared to just that MMA type of boxing uh, feel to it uh, compared to wrestling in general? What are your pros and cons of just the concept of the Grand Championship. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the concept is intriguing, um, but it's also a commitment. So if we're going to do it, we need to do it right. Um, I also, you know, wrestling, you can tell multiple stories in wrestling, but at the same time, the premise is always going to be the same, and how to incorporate that. MMA is different, obviously, because, well, it's, you know, a shoot in a sense. So how do we make that concept work in work? Uh, I think the two matches I've had, I've accomplished that. Do, does it completely work? I, you know, there's still room to grow with it. I don't know if uh, the appeal of wrestling is that it is straight through, and there's no breaks, and maybe the concept hurts in a wrestling match, but at the same time, it's unique, it is different. If we're going to commit to it, we'll commit to it all the way to see if it will truly work. And uh, it can, and I can do it. So, yeah. Hi, Ethan. Educa Wait, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, let me finish that one. Educating yeah. the fans, though, is very important, especially if they're not familiar with the television products each time, especially in the impact zone, if they've never been there before, they might not understand the concept. So just ingraining it and educating the fans on what it is, I think it works better. Sorry. Go ahead. No worries. Braden Harrington here from Flight Network again. Um, I have uh, a two-part question. What are some of your biggest accomplishments? And I love you as grand champion, but what are some future goals? An example, maybe another world championship run. I think I would be remiss and fate would be denied if I did not at least become a three-time world heavyweight champion just based on the fact my name is EC3. So obviously, obviously that is a major goal must accomplish in impact wrestling. Uh, my favorite accomplishment was just 
succeeding. Um, a lot of things worked against me in life and in my career, uh, injuries and firings and self-doubt and things of that nature, but, you know, to continue to strive on and never take myself out of the game and persist, um, just being able to have some remembrance of success has really made it worth it for me, uh, being able to do this at a high level and put my posi- myself in a position to continue to do it at a high level for, you know, a good amount of time left. Uh, that's probably my greatest accomplishment. Secondary only to whipping Kurt Angle's ass for a world title. That was my dream match. I had it. I won it. I mean, it was uh, serendipitous in a way. And, you know, another goal. I you know, see three. Oh, I'm not done. I'm not done because these ideas come to me. I'm stuck. On you go, my friend. <laughs> another goal is I I really want to do something like that hasn't been done and I don't know what that is yet I don't know how to do it yet um, at this point I'm not going to have like an everlasting legacy of like WB Hall of Fame or like Shawn Michaels you know that will never happen but I can do something special I can do something different I can do something unique and how to do it what to do that's still on the drawing board uh, but that's definitely a goal, and uh, that's all. Sorry, I, I rant when you guys ask me questions. EC3, it's uh, Lee here from Live Radio in Scotland here again. Uh, just a very quick one. You mentioned earlier about sometimes, you know, uh, being in the impact zone, you don't get to, to work with the fans for some time because of the, the time delay. You don't know how things are working out. Obviously, you are wrestled all around the world for impact, also in the impact zone across the US, India, uh, here in the UK, and now obviously you're heading off to Canada as well. Is there a country... Uh, or, or even an arena that you have loved performing in the most? That I've loved to perform in the most would probably be, uh, you know, O2 London, where I had the uh, Nervous Hair Match with Rockstar Spud. Is it the O2, whatever it's called? I don't remember. But in London, uh, Nervous Hair Match Spud, like that crowd, everything worked off to a T, and it really was like a launching pad for everything I did in the past. It coincided to where I was going in the future, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And very proud of the response people had to it. It, it worked. I couldn't have had it work any better, even considering the fact I wrestled that match with one arm. So, uh, where would I want to go? I think wherever we can plant our flag. I mean, we have TV in Brazil. We should go there in South Africa. We should go there. You know, India was a great step. Uh, Going back to Japan would be great. China is just an open market with a lot of red tape, literally and figuratively. Um, hell, man, Australia. We can do this in Tunisia for all I care, as long as we're doing it in sort of a passion fan base. Hey, C3, it's Joe from Across the Pond Wrestling again. And... Uh, I was just uh, wondering, obviously, with Bound for Glory being in Canada and also with the kind of return recently of uh, Team Canada's own P.T. Williams, are there any, if you could have one dream match with a returning some Impact legend, who would it be? And because this is a bit of an album, but I still think that a one-on-one match between you and Scott Steiner could be something quite insane and brilliant. <laughs> You know, and it's funny you mentioned that because that's probably who I was going to say. I don't know about the match, per se, as much as the promos leading up to it. I mean, just his promos he was uh, doing with the JB and uh, Joseph Park were high entertainment to me and just a legacy of absolute crazy banter would be the perfect foil to my eloquence and uh, precision. So, yeah, that would be, I mean... Judy Williams is back. I mean, sort of any of the legends that are working elsewhere, and I think you would all know the men I'm discussing. Uh, yeah, definitely Scott Steiner would be one. All righty, EC3, I appreciate your time very much. How about a uh, final thought? Final thoughts. 
Uh, I have a big meeting with my therapist at 3 p.m., so we're going to talk about how my wife is off the rails, and I'm pretty excited about that because it's always a good eye-opener. And then, But besides that, thank you for the passionate uh, questions. I hope there were somewhat insightful answers. Uh, we're only as good as uh, we get portrayed, so I hope I spoke well of the company and uh, being a company man. And You know, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of optimism. There's a ton of talent. This place... And it's always been like that, but just need that catalyst to launch it properly and fully. And uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for your questions. Uh, see you down the road. Perfect. EC3, thank you very much. Media will be back next week with another star-studded media teleconference.